the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Corinthians chapter 2 and my speech verse 4 and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man but in the power of God Oh my, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not of wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So he's telling us something we never knew existed before. And that is a hidden wisdom. And that wisdom was crystallized and kept in store beyond the reach of access. The reason for which it was formulated and kept out of reach was in order to give us strategic advantage. It was designed for our, our, our advantage. It was designed for our glory. However, hallelujah, that means there's wisdom available to run a nation. There's a template, but it's hidden, but it's available. And God did not hide it away from us, but he hid it away for us. And the access possibility of accessing that wisdom is in the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Amen. That means, you see, you see, God is so smart, God is so wise. He knew that we have need for wisdom. So he did not come to ask us what we need because he has superior knowledge. He decided to fabricate this wisdom and to keep it in store in the spirit realm. And the way this wisdom was designed was in such a way that if it is uncovered, it will provide advantage. Hallelujah. We can give it another name. Let's call it a blueprint. A blueprint. A way God intended you and I to function, which is consistent with his policy direction, his policy direction, his plan and his purpose. And then... He decided to hide it away in the spirit so that you can access that which will give you the advantage for your life through spiritual means. When God wants to hide a thing, what he does is that he puts it in his spirit. Because now that that facility is in his spirit, there are several responsibilities that are bestowed upon us. You need to seek it out in the spirit. And that's the aspect of Christianity that we are trying so hard to cut off the responsibility of seeking things out in the spirit. And we are trying to cut it off by this, our um, fast food kind of preaching, where you just tell people that next week something will change, a phone call will come, Father Christmas will show up, and all of that. That's not how God deals with people. Hallelujah. One of the basic things that each believer must become very good at is the ability to seek things out from a realm that is not natural. The advantage that God has made available for you to function in cannot be accessed in the natural. That advantage will come when we know how to seek things out in the spirit. My little exhortation this afternoon or evening is the need and the skill to seek things out in the spirit. To seek it out. 22 years ago, I was a vibrant, vibrant preacher then. 
and I was preaching from campus to campus and all of that. And um, I came to preach on the campus where my wife today was on a crusade. Hallelujah. Meanwhile, when I preached the first night in that crusade, a damn self sold the first $100 I ever had in life into my pocket. She just put $100 there. Now, meanwhile, at that time, I was trusting God to show me my wife. Now, if the, if the secret was in the natural realm, the $100 was, would have been a confirmation. And then we can now spiritualize it and say, if this type comes home, you will bring him money. <laughs> Many of you have stumbled into things like that. Where the wisdom that you were using to navigate, you sourced it from the natural realm. That's why you are under contention. The Bible speaks about something that God formulated and kept. And the design of that which he did was in order to give you advantage. But you see, the average believer doesn't like to seek out things that are in the spirit. The way the spirit realm operates is different from the natural realm, for God's sake. In order for you to access something that is in that realm, you must have a disclosure. A disclosure. You see, spiritual things are first revealed before they are engaged. And so first and foremost, there must be a revelation. Now, let me show you something. Let me show you something. Are you still with me? All right. So we are going to go through a class. There's a study we are going to do. I woke up. Today is Sunday. Yesterday. Yesterday. I woke up 1 a.m. And I began to pray. On my bed. Like I said yesterday, I don't pray loud. I pray soft. I used to pray loud before. It didn't produce results. <laughs> I need results. So I changed. I started praying soft. And I'm profiting more from the soft one. You find the one that works for you. My own is the soft one. So I was running on that soft. Soft. By 3.30 a.m. I was awake like this, not sleeping, not even drowsy. And behold, in my room, a woman was standing. I was seeing her with my physical eyes. Yes, a woman. And she was tying wrapper from the chest like this. And she was not looking at me. She just stood and was allowed. I was seeing her from the side like this. Who is this? Dark in complexion. She's a little bit taller than my wife. Just standing there like that. I was looking at her. She didn't even look in my direction. And the thing I was seeing did not just disappear. It was there. I was still praying. Still praying. And then she now, after a while, she now did like this. When she moved like that, she just disappeared. Now, I began to pray. And then the Holy Ghost began to download what I saw. Which I cannot say in public. What if I was sleeping? What will give you advantage is in the spirit. Huh? And you need to seek So, some of us sometimes we cut some of our sleep so that we can seek out what will give us advantage. Because these modules were of wisdom were designed for our glory. He had an intention to, to pedestal us. He had an intention to take us beyond the limitations that will strangulate people. So, he decided that he will formulate secrets and hide in the spirit. If you seek out those secrets it will pedestal you 
And so Paul said that my speech and my preaching was not with the enticing words of man's wisdom. Because man's wisdom is from the soul. And you are not likely to have an advantage just because your soul is enriched. You see, physical knowledge has the extent to which it can go. Are you with me? The other day I saw somebody in my house and I saw pimples on the person's face. And I remember in chemistry, there's a course called natural product chemistry where we compound <laughs> some leaves. You know, we, use, we, we do phytochemical screening and then we know the chemical component of these, the leaves, the root, the stem, and all of that. And then we'll now begin to find what can change that situation. So we we'll say, okay, let's mix this and this and this to produce this. And then this can clear chicken pox. When chicken pox stains somebody, we know what to compound to. And the ratio to clear it. It's just that if we do that, you'll be a bit darker. But the spots will go. All right? Now, that is physical knowledge. It has some profit, actually. But the advantage I'm talking about is the advantage that spiritual knowledge will grant us. And for each and every one of us that is sitting here today, God knew you were coming. And God decided to formulate wisdom that will put you ahead. Now, what we want to do is to find out how to seek those things out. And I'm telling you that spiritual things, first and foremost, must be revealed. In order for you to... A revelation is an independent decision of disclosure that is as advanced by the Spirit of God. Because I've heard a lot of people that have said, um, I want to see Jesus, I want to see angels, I want to see... Yeah, your desire is good. Your desire is good. But the nature of a revelation is such that it must come from God. It's not, it doesn't come necessarily because you desire. It comes because God wants to unveil something to you. A revelation is a natural result of intimacy with God. It's a natural result. God is spirit. So when you start becoming intimate with God who is spirit you are going to begin to have disclosures these disclosures are to help you in relating with God more accurately so you will become used to having revelations used to having disclosures and these spiritual things must be disclosed in order for you to know that they exist in the first place and so let me read a scripture to us before we talk about disclosures Disclosures, Because many of you sitting here today don't even know yourself by revelation. That is, you don't know who you are. I'm not talking about knowing who you are doctrinally as it is captured in scripture. I'm saying knowing who you are from the standpoint of disclosures that the spirit of God has advanced into your life. All right, let's go. The Bible says that we speak wisdom, the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God has ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah see, I told you how that uh, I had an encounter, alright? At the age of 13, I was taken to heaven. That was where I discovered that I was ordained by God to be a preacher. I did not know that I was designed to be a preacher until I had that encounter. In that encounter, there was a disclosure of my person, disclosure of my purpose, my essence, from the perspective of God. Now, in my adventure, in my practice as a preacher, I have had a lot of opposition from the enemy. Just like the fact that the wife you married 
is the will of God does not mean that you will not have problems. You are going to have problems. But the difference between the guy that did not involve God in making that decision is that when there is problems, when there are problems in your own case and you go back to God and cry to him, God will show up. And one of the things he will do is that he will bring one of those capsules of wisdom that he set up before time for your advantage and then he will give you one of them. When you begin to implement that capsule, you begin to see that crisis situation will be deleted because that wisdom was designed for your advantage. That's the difference between a situation where God was involved in his foundation. You can always go back to him when it is troubleshooting and he will give you wisdom. Okay. So I knew that I was called to be a preacher. Meanwhile, there were several symptoms around my life that suggested that I cannot preach because one of which was my stammering. So it was, it didn't seem so logical that God wanted a mouthpiece and then he reaches out for his stammering. Well, you have heard my story. Along the line, God brought a series of encounters that took away the stammering. And then in place of the stammering, he now put utterance. So I now started the ministry. And then on the part of ministry, Satan now came to attack. Notice that the Bible says that this wisdom that God has kept in the shelf, the princes of this world are not aware of it. Like when Jesus was manifested, the, the princes of this world, there were a lot of gaps about the purpose for which he came. Because that is a secret. His agenda, his purpose is a secret. All they knew was the impact of his ministry on their kingdom. They had sat down many, many times to discuss Jesus. And they felt that the best thing that would happen to the kingdom of darkness was that Jesus needs to be killed. But in killing him, they set him free. Today, even if you are in Kaaba, eh, close to the Kaaba, and you say, forgive me, forgive me. You'll be born again right there. You see. So, because Satan doesn't have access to this wisdom, many times when Satan wants to fight the purpose of God for your life, he ends up promoting it. Just because he doesn't have access to this wisdom. He ends up pushing you ahead. He ends up advancing. You know, those days they said I was using charm, that I had miracle ring that I was using to do miracle. Heal people. Do this, do that. Until I stopped wearing my ring. But you see, thank God that those persecution came. That was what publicized us. <laughs> the, publicity, the publicity we could not pay for. The princes of this world now helped to promote it. The secrets that govern the implementation of your life from God are such that they are not known to the princes. And any attempt that they make at trying to resist you will only end up advancing you. So they thought that they killed him but they only set him free. If you check and read your Bible critically you will see several miscalculations of the devil. And I hear that witches hold meetings yeah, they dot their eyes, they cross their teeth, they check it, they check it, look for the season that is most appropriate to attack. But when you read the Bible, you see miscalculations of the devil. One of which is that they killed Jesus. Huh? They would have allowed Jesus, if they had known the secret behind this manifestation, they would have allowed him to grow old. Uh, let, just endure him. <laughs> because the power of his mission was tied to his death, burial, and resurrection. As prophetic as the birth of Jesus was, it has nothing to do directly with our redemption. It is the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus that kickstarts the, the protocol of wisdom that was kept in the archives. And the devil facilitated that process to achieve the vision of God because it is a secret. 
So the Bible says, had the princes of this world known these, they would have waited for Jesus to grow old. And since it is the world that was made flesh, Jesus by himself will not have died. And that's why the Bible says that eh, now is the judgment of this world. Now the prince of this world is cast out. And if I be lifted up, because it's not his own job to kill himself. If you allow him, he will not die. Because it was the world that was made flesh. Just like if Jesus did not rise now, his body would have not decomposed. Because it was the world that was made flesh. Not flesh. Not from the ground to flesh. But world to flesh. That world will still be there. So it, there will be an evidence that Jesus did not have the power to over death if Jesus did not rise. And the reason why his body is not there is because he rose a long time ago. In fact, the Bible teaches that one of the evidences that Jesus is in heaven right now is that people can be baptized in the Holy Ghost. That was the explanation that Peter gave on the day of Pentecost to justify what was happening. He said that Jesus that you crucified, God in the heavens, a coronation service just took place and he has been, he has been made both Lord and Christ. Every time you see the Holy Ghost move, it's a proof that Jesus was actually exalted. Somebody healed Jesus was actually exalted. And all of these realities came into manifestation by the aid, the agency of the kingdom of darkness. Because what was working was a secret. There is a secret concerning your life. You are not as vulnerable as you think. Okay, because herdsmen killed people, 70 people. You saw the, the coffins. And when you saw it, you now began to wonder. Hey! Hey! So one day, me too. You are, your mind is being spent on the wrong thing. Check your Bible. Check your Bible. Check your Bible. When Lazarus died, the righteous Lazarus, when he died, it was angels that came to take him to paradise. Not demons. Mm. You don't have any covenant with death right now. Yes. The angel, look, check, check, check your Bible, check your Bible. Nobody that God called, that walked with God, died accidentally. Everyone, when their time to transit comes, they will know. Why? Because the angels will come way before the day of appointment. So that is not a rescue strategy. It's a red carpet reception. Angels will come. You will, you, you know, you will see them. In the case of my own biological father, the angels were there for two weeks. Then told my mother that cry. The angels have come to pick me. So my mother said, tell them to go back for now. <laughs> I come on Sunday. I, as you are seeing me, I have nothing to fear. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing to fear. Nothing, no, there's nothing left to fear. So it was angels that came to pick him up, not demons that came to transport him. His transportation was in the hand of angels. The rich man eh, that Lazarus was eating the crumbs that fell from his table, demons came to translate him. You see, when people die, they go down. Like, you see, have you ever studied the book of Romans chapter 10? The Bible says, who will go down to Hades to bring Jesus up. So when Jesus died, he went down. Uh, that down, Seol or Hades, is the waiting place for judgment. Because the next agenda after death is judgment. But you have to wait for judgment. Just like if a case in court is adjourned, you will wait for it. There's no activity. You might be in prison waiting. That prison is not a permanent place. Maybe they put you in prison because they are afraid that you might escape. So, to, in the interest of justice, <laughs> remain, <laughs> remain kept here. It's not as if judgment has put you there. It's, your integrity is a matter. So, be here for now. That's how Hades is. It's a place of waiting. Right? And in that Hades, there are two compartments. According to the book of Luke chapter 16. One of the compartments is called paradise. Paradise is down. Notice that Jesus spoke to the thief on the cross. And said, today you will be with me. Where? Down. In paradise. So there's a compartment. 
down that is called paradise hell is not an eternal place hell is a waiting place so there are two compartments there one is paradise or abraham's bosom then the other one is jehina hell there are two waiting places and in that legal system there's no uh, no arrangement for bail <laughs> there's no bail arrangement so everyone will have to wait until judgment it is after judgment that eternal destinies will be defined right so so some people will be waiting in hell and some others will be waiting in paradise now if you ask me a question I say pastor what will make somebody enter that hell it's not for today i will answer I will answer subsequently. Somebody might be asking again, say, okay, since hell is a waiting place, can somebody wait in hell and then eventually when the judgment takes place, the person... <laughs> will we discuss those matters much more appropriately? There are 25 snapshots of the afterlife that we have in scripture. We'll bring each snapshot out and then form a you know what they call a jigsaw puzzle we'll connect them then you see the picture of the afterlife when you look forward and you look backward all these things are secrets huh? good so god operates by secrets and that's what a mystery is and the bible says that we speak the mystery of god to them that are perfect come with me let's do some reading I want to pick two points so that we can pray together. As a way of a way of stirring you up. These are the days where we need secrets. As believers, secrets. As governments, secrets as nations. We need to tap into the economy of secrets. Alright. Now, verse 9 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The Bible says, but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them. So the first thing, if you are going to interface with secrets, first of all, it must be revealed. You cannot apprehend these secrets without a disclosure. Now, so the activity, the adventure that you must be engaged in in order to get a disclosure, that activity is called seeking the face of God. Meanwhile, you need to understand the symptoms that will suggest to you that you need a secret. First of all, the Bible says that it is not given unto us to direct our steps. So, if you are about to take a decision about that we impact many years of your life, Bible teaches us not to take such a decision from your brain. You must take it from secrets. It must be disclosed. It must be revealed. If you walk that way, your work will be established. Though a thousand falls by your side, because you are operating by secrets, you will be established under circumstances that other people that do not have the kind of access that you have will fail. If they say, okay, everybody is divorcing, <laughs> I'm not one of them. Because the wisdom through which I made selection was not from this world. Yes, and for every wisdom of God, there's a security. There's an insurance policy that safeguards it against, against invasion, against, against decay, against, against, against thieves. It is safeguarded. So when you walk by these secrets, there's an assurance that you will survive every season, every different time. Because all those parameters of changes in seasons and time have been factored into the integrity of the secret. Seeking the face of God. The result of seeking the face of God is disclosure. 
revelation. That's the reason. I know that I need a secret. Because I have come to a point where I need to make a decision that will impact my future. This kind of decision cannot be made aside from a secret. There is something written in heaven concerning this particular aspect of my life that I need to access. And when I so access it, it will put me on the advantage. There are decisions that people have taken that have put them on the disadvantage in several aspects of their life. It is because secrets were not accessed. Are you still with me? How do you seek the face of God? Because if we are going to access secrets, we need revelations. And revelations are natural results of seeking the face of God. Amen. You know this year, I don't want to assume that we know things. Eh? Let's start again. Building from the scratch. So that each one of us can become strong in his own respect. What are the basics in seeking the face of God? If the business you are doing today, it was God that led you into it. Huh? It should be able to survive recession. Survive contrary circumstances and situations. That's how you know that God is involved. Our marriage, with me and my wife, our marriage has gone through several seasons. Several things have happened. Several challenges. Even a time came when I was posted away to Lagos. And because our, our primary assignment is in this town, I cannot pack the whole house and go to Lagos. Because my existence is not about me. It's about that which God wants me to do. And the primary platform location for that thing which God wants me to do is here. So if the office puts me away, my family will still remain here. So that I will be coming to where God has assigned me. So we stayed apart for six years. It's very difficult to run two homes. You're running one somewhere. Running one somewhere else. And you're supposed to be a father. From a distance. That is a proof. That is one of the circumstances. Where that suggests that you need a secret. Many people came under. That kind of pressure. To split the home. Because of official um, demands and all of that. And after three years, that transfer led to the break of those homes. However, if you have access to secrets, that which might seem as an advantage for the devil to take over the family can become the same situation that will be used to strengthen the family because there is a secret. If you have a secret, uh, the result of you entering into different seasons will be different from someone else that does not have a secret. Seek in the face of God. Now, please give me a microphone quickly. Let's take, because we are all Christians, we have been seeking the face of God for a long time. Let's find out what it means to seek the face of God. Because a secret must be revealed. A secret is not commonplace. It's not available on the surface. You cannot access it at face value. It is something you need to seek out. If the thing we are seeking out is in the natural realm, it would have been easy to seek it out. Maybe you sit down and then you try to flash back. Where did I keep my car key? Okay, when I came yesterday, I moved here, I ate here. And you can trace it back and find out where you... Because my driver's license is something that I always need to trace back to know where I kept it. Trace back. If it were in the natural realm, you can trace it back. But if it's in the spiritual realm, it's a different ballgame altogether. Yes, so, where's the microphone? Look for anybody you like his face or her face. Give the person. And the question is, how do we seek the face of God? You have been a Christian for a long time, so um, this is your life. You should not be afraid to tell us your life. If you waste time and you cannot find the person, you yourself begin to answer it. <laughs> Yeah. So, bro, in, what do we do if we want to seek the face of God? We are in need of secrets. Amen. Yeah, amen. Do you need to stand? Sit down. Enjoy yourself, okay? Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, we need to seek the face of God. We need secrets to run, secrets to operate. 
Isaac sowed in the land. God told him to sow in dry season. There was famine. He sowed in dry season. And in the same year, the Bible says he reaped a hundredfold. And the Philistines envied him. A man, he was mad because dry season, he went and was sowing seed. But in the same year, he reaped a hundredfold and the Philistines envied him. He had God. Yes. Amen. Um, in my only two understanding, seeking God has to do with deliberately um, asking God in the place of prayers um, and waiting for his answers. And how I see God most times is that I asking take time God for something in the place of prayers and waiting for his answers. Answer. And most times he speaks to me the answers of the questions I ask him in my secret place through the studies of the world, through visions of the night, and through open visions that I see. You see, you have only helped us with 30% of my requests. There are many people here that have been seeking the face of God the way you are talking, and they have not gotten feedback. If you are with me, if you raise your hand, if, if I spoke your mind, so what are they doing wrong? Should I tell you something? Your answer is correct, too, but it has not helped them because they are doing this thing, you see. They pray, show me my husband, show me my husband, show me my husband. <laughs> <laughs> There's no feedback. Have you prayed that prayer? Don't see, oh, you have missed an opportunity. <laughs> it, you have, okay, let's do it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? They pray, too. They pray, but there's no feedback. Do you, let me tell you something that is very fundamental. You know, in order to cook, you need fire. But it's not the fire that cooks, it's the heat that cooks. But fire will produce heat. But if we have a way to produce heat without fire, you will discover that we can cook without the flame. Any man, any woman, because I have studied the issue of seeking the face of God for a long time. I wanted to see how I could teach to help believers to know how to tap into secrets. And I found out that if you have not accepted the life of intercession, the ministry of intercession as a baseline lifestyle, it will be very difficult for you to access the mind of God. The average believer has not accepted the ministry of intercession, which is a basic ministry that we have been called into. Now, this is the, this is our status quo in the spirit. Listen to me. The word justification is a legal register. It's a legal word. And justification means you are discharged and acquitted. It is our justification that makes us have the capacity through the blood of Jesus to stand before God boldly and without any form of inferiority, any form of condemnation because of the testimony that is born in the spirit through justification. You see, so the effect of justification is that I can stand before God face to face. The result of justification is supposed to be interaction with God, talking with God, talking, talking. So if your justification does not translate to communication, you have missed a fundamental lesson in your intimacy with God. Your justification is a standing that you have with God on the account of the blood of Jesus. That standing should translate to communication. And so every believer has been called into the ministry of intercession. Alright? That's what we do. That's the life we live. If you check the apostolic community in the book of Acts of the Apostles, you are going to see the twofold, twofold ministry of the apostolic company. Peter was the one that said, we will give ourselves continually to the ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. In fact, if you look into those two items critically, you will find out that the word of God comes into force when prayer is 
already in place. So the heaviest molecule of the Christian life is priesthood, is prayer. So if someone has not yet situated his or herself in the prayer base, your access of even revelations into the scriptures will be limited. So for many years, I decided to live as an intercessor. If I'm going to travel from here to Jaws, I speak in tongues all through. Yes, that's the life. That's the lifestyle. I speak in tongues all through. That's why I like public transport. I just take my bag and I pay the price. And I get a comfortable seat. If they are sitting four in the middle row, I pay for two seats. Hey, glory. You say, this guy has money. I'm looking for a connection. And I begin to pray in tongues. I begin to pray in tongues. I begin to pray in tongues. By the time we get to Akwanga, I'm seeing things I did not ask God for. Many of you, I see you in the night. I see you. What I told you that day was not that day I saw it. I saw it in Gombe. Just in my own personal prayer with God, things will just start coming. Things will start coming. And if I'm asking God for, for something, that thing is harder to locate than the things I see. It's harder. So if you have not yet established your life on the bouncing burner called intercession, nothing will be cooked. Mm. There will be no heat. No heat sufficient to cook anything. So day in, day out, you'll be operating with the wisdom of man. Meanwhile, spiritual things must be revealed and secrets have been kept in the archives of God through which your life will be prepared through any season whatsoever. If we were running prayer meeting now, we won't be like this. You know, yesterday I said there's healing and miracle. Ah, they say kind of. That's why. But I'm telling you the truth. There's nothing else we are using to minister to anybody other than the fact that we are men of prayer. It's in the place of prayer that I got that the spirit of death was coming into the hall today. I did not get it. Yes, it's in the place of prayer. I picked it up. Because I'd like to see a meeting before the meeting. So, so this even the meeting exists in God's secret archive. You can peep into it. There were meetings where I came and already saw the meeting. I already knew where an angel would stand. So because I knew where the angel would stand, when I finished, I preached, preached, came to a point. I told them that you can circle this place. I called one sister, stand there, she fell off. Call her another one, stand there, she fell off. It's only me that knows why they are falling. <laughs> secret. Meanwhile, they think I'm a powerful man. All I have, secret. The reason why you are surprised because you don't know what is happening. If I had told you that COC is the, it will not look strange to you. But I'm the only one that knows the secret. I won't tell you. But you'll be seeing the manifestation of the secret. You can see somebody's life under the same circumstances. The manifestation of his life suggests stability, suggests strength. That's the result of the secret he's working with. Please help me ask your neighbor, what secret do you have? Full and men are everywhere, killing everybody. It is a time you need secrets to survive. If you have not yet accepted the call as an intercessor, don't ask for too much. Your life won't be too different from what it is now. Uh, yes. The bouncing burner of intercession is what now puts you strategically in the place where you can now begin to access secrets. In my opinion, if you are not an intercessor, I don't think you are desperate enough for life. You are not. You are a comic. You are a comic figure. You know they do Batman and Superman. You are one of them. <laughs> but when you start getting serious, you now begin to intercede. Intercession is. The, you see, intercession is not as if you are praying for yourself. You are praying God's prayers. You are praying God's prayers. You are praying God's prayers. That is. Some of you, the places that you are serving, the offices you are serving, you were just placed there as an intercessor to be 
offering incense often so that mad people will not use some of those platforms to bring the nation into abject poverty so you are standing there as a as we begin to operate as intercessors there's enough heat in our spirit so that if the holy spirit wants to bring secrets to us it can easily come Most of us decided to sign up for a serious prayer life when marriage was at the door. And so the reason why you are praying is because you want to marry. That prayer will receive no answer. It will even generate more confusion. Because you have forgotten step one, you want to enter into step three. You will be confused when you labor like that. You say, okay, I'm, I, I'm looking. As we finish with labor, then four people will come and say, God told me. <laughs> God told me. First of all, sign up as an intercessor. An intercessor is not looking for anything. He just wants to pray God's prayers. All right? So that's our default mode. That's what we do. Huh? Secrets are revealed to intercessors. If you have ever read the scripture, and the Bible says that God will never do a thing except he reveals this to his servants, the prophets. I'm talking about prophets in active service, not prophets by title. You, you know, he called them his servants, the prophets, so they're in active service. There are a lot of people that are prophets that are no longer in, in service. So those ones, he, he bypasses them. What that scripture suggests is that, because the major, the basic assignment of a prophet is intercession. Now anybody that is doing the work of the prophet, which is intercession, if God wants to do anything, he will never do it except he discloses it to the intercessor. There is a call that God is making on us. Since the devil has decided to raise the bar of warfare, we are also called to raise the bar of our stand with God. And each and every one of us that is justified must take advantage of the privileged platform that God has given you to stand before him without condemnation, stand before him without, without inferiority. We must translate that benefit to be a benefit that affords us communication. And so we must adopt and partake in the call for intercession. That's the first requirement for seeking the face of God. You must first be involved in praying God's prayers before you can now start to pray your prayers. If you start your prayer life by praying your prayers, because I've seen a lot of prayer booklets, prayer reign, and everything is about me. Huh? Now that thing that is fighting my life, that thing, every prayer on that prayer item is personal. If you start your prayer endeavors from the personal plane you are going to get so confused because the reason for which god set up intercession is not for your personal prayers the reason for which god set up intercession is for his own prayers you see prayer in its original form and context is a kingdom activity it is something that facilitates the implementation of the policy direction of the kingdom of heaven the bible says die will be done on earth as it is done where in heaven prayer now creates an avenue for the will of god which has been decreed in the heaven to pass into the earth and be established in the earth so prayer is a kingdom thing it is required for god to administer his purpose in the earth that means god needs prayer in the earth for him to be able to implement his, his policy an intercessor is that bridge that gives God the legitimacy to establish his will because in this realm that is governed by humankind, we have joined our will to the will of God to see his will come to pass in our space. So an intercessor is a veritable tool in the hand of God in the implementation of the purposes of God upon the face of the earth. Such a person has decided to, to be a co-laborer with God. And because of that level of partnership, God once and again discloses to that individual secrets that will put him on the advantage. 
you don't qualify to access secrets if you have not yet decided to become a resourceful Christian by accepting our call to intercession. Most of your prayers are personal. That's why they are not powerful. I have been an intercessor for half my life. All right? For half my life. Actually, half my life plus three years. I've been an intercessor for 23 years. Okay? I can tell you this fact. One, most of my prayers, I pray for people. I pray for God's purposes that I perceive. That's most of my prayers. 70% of my prayers. I pray for people. I can be. I was in Gombe. I started seeing you. Yeah. Most of my prayers. That's how it is. So sometimes God brings people to me in prayer. And I begin to pray for them. I don't even know what I'm praying about. Most of my prayers. 70% of them. Now, 10% of my prayers are warfare. Sometimes God comes to alert me and says, there's a problem here, problem there, problem in this person's life. Then when you begin to pray for the person, you begin to see the devil begin to speak back and say, no, I have legitimacy here. And then 10% of my prayers is that way. Most 70% of my prayers is intercession. This is what happens. I found out that, okay, maybe I have a need. There are several times I bring the need into God's presence. And then while I'm praying on the need, the need does not stay. The Holy Ghost will brush it out and bring another thing. I've learned by experience that when he brushes it out, I leave it. I begin to pray on that thing. Alright? A time comes if God needs me to vocalize something for him to do something in my life, he brings down my need himself. I'll be praying for something else. Then he brings that mind. He says, pray on this one now. Pray now. Pray now. Then I begin to pray on it. And a few days later, it will come to pass. Listen. When I sat there, we're praying. I was praying on many things. Because right now, they are tabulating our promotion, whether we're promoted or not. I'm supposed to be. Right? The list is not yet out. I sat there, and I saw the list. I've tried to pray for that promotion. He has not allowed me. If I start praying, I go somewhere else. So I start praying, I go somewhere else. So I left it. But while we're praying here, the, the list, I, I zoom. Let me announce before time. I will show you the letter. I pass from that, what I saw. I, I was promoted. No, wait first. No, wait. wait calm down. I will add substance to this, my declaration, with a letter soon. I saw it. It zoom. Hey, you see? And I didn't pray about it. I was praying about something else. I saw that. Oh, it may be that somebody has prayed about it. Yes. Maybe God had put that body on somebody's heart and then the person had been laboring. And the, You see, you must understand you have to be selfless in the prosecution of prayer. If you have not yet come to that point where you embrace intercession. Many people have looked at us because we pray every day. We pray. People, ah, they'll pass. They'll be. Some people will laugh and say, oh, this is their own church. The way that they do this is their own church for this market. Now it's different. Every day now, whoa, 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 whoa. Those are the things we hear. But if you take your Bible and look at the book of Acts of the Apostles, those guys had no AK-47, but they were able to fill Jerusalem with their doctrine. Is it because there were such wonderful theologians? There was something else that was pushing. The gates were open that were pushing the utterances that they were speaking. So if you have not yet accepted the call as an intercessor, you are going to find it very difficult to access secrets. Number two. You must understand that the burden, the major burden of intercessory people is this. When you begin to intercede, 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 sometimes God empowers you to become a law enforcement agent by giving you 
and instruction. Okay, we're interceding about the land right now. Then he gives us an instruction. You go and do this thing. So when we go and we obey and do that thing, I hope you know in working with God that is a spirit, it is in obedience, obedience to the spirit of God that leads to the manifestation of his power. He whispers into your ears and you obey him and then upon obeying him, his power is manifested. That's how the power of God is manifested. So when we begin to intercede, expect God giving you an instruction at some point. Yes. This instruction that God is giving has the power of salvation in it. So if you are somebody that, even though you are interceding, but you, are, you don't follow instructions that come from the Holy Ghost. You rationalize instructions. Your output level is going to be small. You see, very little. And uh, your access to the secret base of the Spirit will be very, very little. First is the call to intercession. Second is a willingness to obey spiritual instructions that God releases on your spirit, man. In order for you to be safe, when you have an instruction, you need to check with your pastor, check with um, a spiritual leader to help vet, vet that instruction you are receiving if it's accurate and then receive his blessings to go and fulfill the instruction. While we're praying today, a few instructions dropped in my spirit of things that we need to do as intercessors to safeguard this land. Hallelujah. Now, the, all this matter I'm saying is, is still selfless. So the prayer you are praying, the instructions you are following, is, it doesn't seem to address your own personal challenge yet. If you are a believer that has, that is obedient to God, there is something that God will add on your life. And that which he adds is called favor. You need favor to be able to access secrets. And the child grew and worked strong in spirit and had favor between God. Is God first. Have you heard what Gabriel said when Angel Gabriel was dispatched from heaven to come and give Daniel information? And then he was arrested. The prince of Persia kept him in the prison for 21 days. And after 21 days, Michael was dispatched in heaven because Daniel was still praying the same prayers he was praying. Meanwhile, answers to the prayers have been deployed 21 days ago. There's a malfunctioning somewhere. So Michael was dispatched only to discover that Gabriel had been in prison. Michael intervened, arrested the prince of Persia, opened the prison house. Said, Michael told Gabriel, yeah, you go and deliver your message. I'll be here in the battle. When you are done delivering the message, come and join me so that we can displace this, these evil spirits. That was the day that Gabriel appeared to Daniel the first time. You know, prior to this time, Gabriel had been coming in dreams. Wait for Daniel to sleep. He will appear and begin to give him instruction. But because of the nature of the situation, Gabriel decided to appear to Daniel for the first time. And what was the first thing that Gabriel told Daniel? He said, Oh Daniel, oh Daniel, thou art highly favored. Your name is reigning in heaven. You need that favor to be able to get a secret. Many of you don't have it. So when you are coming, the kind of aroma that comes from your spirit is not a sweet-smelling savour. Favor is like a perfume. You know when Jacob was praying for... Huh? When Isaac was praying for Jacob, you know, Jacob disguised and came and received prayer. You know, he said something. He said, my son smells. That's a spiritual smell. My son smells like a field that the Lord God has blessed. He identified him by smell. Meanwhile, the guy praying was blind. But he could smell something that was not in the room. He could smell something that transcended the environment. He had a smell. That is favor. It's like a smell. He said, Daniel, your name is reigning in heaven. 
Because your name is reigning, I have been dispatched to give you secrets. Favor comes when we are obedient to God. Now, if we begin to pray now in the next five minutes, which we will do, we will do practical. Then we'll see, we'll test our level of penetration. If you can reach heaven in five seconds, if you can reach heaven in 30 seconds, if you can articulate the mind of God in five seconds, sometimes you may not have the whole day. You might just have five seconds. And you should be able to achieve penetration, access, and articulation in five seconds. In order for you to do that, you need favor. You, you remember what Gabriel told um, Mary when he came from heaven. And he said, Blessed art thou among what? Women. Favor. It is your obedience to God that determines the level of favor that you have in the court of heaven. There are several people when the incense of their prayers begin to ascend to, to heaven. Ah, the elders begin to disturb God. That's him again. And in the prayers, he gets summoned to heaven. And he will hear the whispers of the elders, the stakeholders. Nothing is hidden from him. Once his aroma begins to come, there, if that's favor, favor, favor. You see, God does not have favorites. God has intimates. Yes. Because it's not as if you say, okay, I like this one, I don't know. When you become intimate with him, he bestows upon you favor. So you can see men like Moses that can go and tell God, because of me, do this because of me. He, he takes advantage of the favor that he has in the courts of heaven. The second question we need to ask is your level of obedience. Your level of obedience. Your level of obedience. Most of the prayers I've been praying are prayers of personal breakthrough, personal deliverance. I stopped praying those prayers long ago. And now I pray the prayers of God. Yeah. So you begin to hear, for some of you it might be strange, strange for you to hear the way we are praying for Benue State, the way we are praying for Nigeria. You say, well, is it needful? Don't worry. We, we are functionaries that are adapted eh, to servicing the altar of heaven. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Amen. So there's a favor element. There's a response to the intercessory call. There's a need to be diligent in obedience. And then there is a favor element. That it bestows upon people that are giving themselves to serve his will and to obey his instructions. If we check your life and you're living for yourself. And if we check somebody's life and the person is living for God. And then you want a favor from God. So you are trying to go before God. You will have a lot of challenges. But the man that is living for God, because he's living for God, he has favor. Two of you are born again, he has favor. So he has penetration. He can access the mind of God easily. But you, you can be praying, 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 and there's no feedback. It's essentially because even if feedback comes, it will squander on self. Because that is your orientation. It is to that orientation that you have, you have aligned. So it determines the measure of favor that you carry. So first of all, spiritual things must be revealed. And if we can access these secrets, our life will be much better than it is now. Hallelujah. You can have a disclosure, a secret, a revelation, and yet the revelation might not profit you. It's not only revelation you need. In addition to your revelation, you need something else. Now, let's take a scripture quickly. 
and then I will round up there. I have five points to show us, but um, Job chapter 33 from verse 12, the Bible says, But behold, in this thou art not just. I will answer thee that God is greater than man. Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any matters. That means God doesn't come under pressure to give you an explanation if by any means you see him in a bad light. Eh? Maybe something happens. You say, why did God allow this thing? This is wicked. Why did God allow it? He will never give account. He will not answer you. He is, he is secure enough. Eh? To allow you to misunderstand him. Uh, so he doesn't give account of his matters. For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then God openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. Now, you know what that means? This means that God gives you a dream, a, dislo a disclosure. Hmm? But yet, it keeps away the interpretation from you. You see the vision, but it doesn't make any significant input into your life. That is Elihu telling us one of the reasons why God is greater than man. He will communicate to you in a vision, but yet, the understanding of it, he keeps it. Just to show you that the level you are operating is small. I read this scripture to show us how that a revelation is not sufficient. You can have a revelation, a dream, but it's the meaning of it that gives you strategic knowledge. So we said that if we are going to deal with secrets, the first thing we need is a revelation. But a revelation in most cases may not be sufficient. You might need something more. And that's why there are twin spirits in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. It speaks about the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of revelation. It's the spirit of revelation that gives you the dream. But it's the spirit of wisdom that gives you the interpretation to the dream. It is when the spirit of wisdom has operated that you now have spiritual knowledge. It's the work of that revelation and the spirit of wisdom that is equal to spiritual knowledge. Did you get that? Yes, uh -huh, spiritual knowledge. And it's spiritual knowledge that puts you on the advantage. Now, so the question is, when you arrive at the point of revelation, maybe you have a dream, you have a disclosure, you have a vision, and there is no interpretation, how do you advance? When you have a revelation without an interpretation, you, it means God is calling you to the place of prayer. Is calling you to the place of prayer. That's where interpretations come. That's where things are unveiled. At least I've told you something that I saw so clearly. All right. I'm still the reason why I won't talk about it is because the interpretation is not is not full. Sometimes I travel with those kind of revelations, like those burdens like that. It might take three months before the thing now opens. And sometimes it doesn't even interpret. When you enter into the circumstance, a particular circumstance and situation, you now say, Oh, this is what was shown me. See, because the spirit of wisdom that will bring that knowledge to you is different from the, the, the anointing that brought the disclosure to you. So we have the need for revelation. Seeking the face of God. The need for knowledge, spiritual strategic knowledge which comes when the spirit of wisdom has acted upon the revelation that you have received. Did we get the two points? Alright. Now, what are the two things in practicality? Give me sound. Two things you need and the state in which you must put your heart in order for you to ascend into heaven. First of all, if you are a Bible student, I think we did that some time ago, the 13 postures of the human heart. 13 postures. If I insult you, I curse you, and you allow it to affect your heart, eh? your heart can become heavy. Your heart can become wounded. Your heart and if your heart is heavy you cannot ascend to high places if your heart is wounded 
your ability for perception has been affected. So if the devil wants to give you problem, wants to make you never to access secrets, he tampers with your heart. There are several times he will tamper with your heart overnight. When you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like praying. Has it happened to you before? Okay, it has not happened. You are, you are a spiritual. You are, a, yeah, you are high up there. He tampers with your heart. He tampers with your heart. To affect your navigation. There is a state of heart that we need to have in order for us to be able to penetrate high places. Because that's where secrets are domiciled. If you pick a secret from a high place and you begin to implement it here, the wisdom in it will make it such that if the devil decides to fight you in implementing that secret, he will help you. I want to teach you how to position your heart. Because there's a heart posture. If your heart is heavy, if your heart is heavy, you cannot go up. So when you wake up in the morning, the devil will send somebody to you to make that heart heavy. So the whole day, you are out of sync with God the whole day because the devil knew that you had plans to access. So he came and troubled your heart from the morning time. Hallelujah. Some people know what I'm talking about. There are some family problems you can have. It's an attack on your heart. So that you'll be totally helpless. You'll not be able to bring, to move the hand of God. And bring the warmth of God into the situation. So the devil orchestrates somebody that works for him. He moves the person in the flesh. To come and throw an arrow. That will affect your heart. All he's trying to do is to ensure. That you don't have the ability to mount up. With wings like the eagles. There's a state of heart. Your heart needs to be light. If you are going to walk with God. It needs to be light. Very light. Many times you are going to have to speak in tongues for long. To make the heart light. Yes. 45 minutes. 1 hour 15 minutes. 1 hour 30 minutes. For the heart to become light. You have not started praying. No. You have not started. You are just trying to heal the heart. You are just trying to heal the heart. Your heart must be in a proper state. Because I need to make you understand this. If something doesn't touch your heart, it doesn't change your life. You can even pray prayers and your heart is not involved. And you can pray for three hours. It begins to change your life when you start feeling what you are praying. You start feeling it. Every spiritual transaction you are doing will be registered on the canvas of your heart. If we know that your access to God is a precious thing, there are some times when people insult you, you will not answer. Because if it has the pot potential of denting your heart, you will know it's a great price to pay. And so you can allow it go. Because you have something. Something that you treasure. Your fellowship with God. And you will not allow anything to truncate it. Hallelujah. Now, so sometimes that's why we pray in tongues long. Pray in tongues long. Pray in tongues long. So that we can go beyond the weight. So that our heart can become light. Second thing. You pay the price to make your heart light. Sometimes you need to pray in tongues long. Sometimes you need to go and get a tape. A tape where, where the frequency of instrumentation on that tape. It was taken from the very cocoon of cherubims. Huh? So it, it has therapeutic abilities, analgesic and therapeutic abilities. When you put that sound and it's watering the whole place, it heals your broken heart. So those are tips. Those are tips. There are tips that can help you pray. Eh? Some, some people's prayer can help your own prayer. So you can tape it and you, you, you pollute the entire atmosphere with that vibe. It will, it will heal the disjoint in your spiritual membrane. You must invest in your spiritual adventure. You must invest in the state of your heart. You must, you must, ah, some of us, the reason why, it's not as if we are not seeing iniquity. We have eyes too. We can behold things. Some of the things we see, our flesh likes it. But you know what? We are not sure if we can restore this relationship we have with God now, if we go for that thing. 
So even though it is there, we, we, we are ready to forego it. Because in your work with God, you are going to have to make choices. When you start loving God, you begin to make choices for God. Many of you, uh, you don't consider your work with God so significant. And so you can, ask, you can, you can make God, make him cry, make him grieve. No, that's a man that feels it's about him. If it becomes about God, you will make choices that will be suitable for the Lord that tabernacles your spirit. Hallelujah. It's a great price to pay if you are going to access wisdom from God. So, if you have labor to set your heart in alignment, then the last thing to do is to drive the engine. You drive the engine. I don't know if you are in alignment where you are. But I want us to drive the engine. In driving the engine, that means praying with your spirit. There are two ways to pray. You can pray with your understanding. You can also pray with your spirit. Right? Right? When you have achieved alignment, when you begin to drive the engine, you must have a focus. The focus is that I want to secure the mind of God. That's the focus. Whatever it will be, I want to secure the mind of God. That's how you set your eye. That's your determination. And then you drive your engine by speaking in tongues. You drive that your intention. You drive that your motive. You drive it. You drive it. If your spirit is light enough, the wind from heaven will come just like the wild wind came and it took Elijah and caught him up into the heavens. The wind from heaven, it will come. Your spirit will be caught up. That's how I go to heaven now. The wind. And what? So before I travel, I touch the car and I, I, I go there. Okay, then I say, okay, this car will reach where I'm going. Because from late last year, after the crusade, I discovered the devil was looking for me to kill me. <laughs> so I added more precaution. I checked the road, whether this car has a likelihood of reaching where I'm going before I enter. Penetration. He will send the wind and the wind will rapture your spirit and then you will begin to see from heaven not from here uh, is your heart right all right let's go to god for five minutes hey, hey 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 see as we are going forget about your problem forget about your alert forget about the bank forget the fact that you took your atm to the the ATM, this thing, and then the thing, the thing swallowed your, your ATM card. I know you are worried. Forget. See, heal the heart. There's a lot of work we need to do on the heart. This heart is a platform. It's a launching pad. It's a tarmac. God wants to land there. And the devil is aware. So, he will make sure that it's not in order. It's not in alignment. Sometimes you may need to repent of some sin. You may need to repent of some trespass, some stubbornness. So that your heart can be light, light in alignment for navigation in the spirit. Can we begin to advance just quietly in tongues? Focus only on Jesus. Focus only on Jesus. Be expecting Jesus to descend into your atmosphere with a wind, with a wind, a wind. Through which you will be caught up into the heavens. Kubenala. Kusana endola. Abre zozana teska branda kusabahai. Lokabata ekos kame. Lord, we pray that this year you will grant us. You will grant us the grace and the favor for penetration. For access. That will be raptured. By your wind 
again and again and taken into your courts to behold your beauty. We ask, so oh God, that you make each and every one of us to become addicted to your presence. Addicted to your presence. Addicted to your presence. Focus on him. Focus on him. Focus on him. Focus on him. And you are God. Mighty are your miracles. Stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. Awesome God. How great thou art, you are God, mighty are your miracles. 